Greetings in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, we thank God for this beautiful day that he has given us today. Uh, it is only by the grace of God that we are here today. And we just want to thank the Lord for giving us this opportunity once again to gather as we share the word of God to build each other and to encourage each other. So I hope you are going to be blessed today with what we are going to be sharing and I hope a soul is going to be saved around the world. So today we're going to be taking our scripture reading from the book of Luke chapter 1 verses number 26 to number 28. Okay, this is the time when the angel Gabriel visited Mary the mother of Jesus and gave her the news that she was going to be carrying Jesus and that was going to be done by the Spirit of God. I have entitled our discussion today Virgin Blessings. So when we read, um, the Bible says from verse 26, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin and spoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, you that are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. So today we just want to look at two things. There are two points that we want to discuss. Okay, the angel Gabriel was sent to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. That is um, where you remember uh, Nazareth was a place when we read in the book of John chapter 1 verse 16. He says when Nathaniel was saying that can anything good come out of Nazareth, meaning that it was a despised city, nothing Good was expected to come out of it. So the angel approached Mary. Mary was in Nazareth. I want somebody to, to hold that. Okay. So the second aspect that we are going to look at. The angel appeared to a virgin. The angel appeared to Mary. Mary was a virgin. So I took time to say, what is a virgin? And when I looked at the dictionary, I saw the meanings of virgins that we all know, but then I was attracted by this one that says a virgin is something not yet used, exploited, or processed. Right. So we can just say that it's something that is pure. Right. Okay, so today as we are going to be talking about virgin blessings, I hope someone is going to be encouraged. So, a virgin is something that is pure. So when you give your life, when Jesus uh, cleanses your, your soul and cleanses your body and cleanses everything, you are a new creation. We have spoken about that. So when you keep yourself pure, yeah. so when you are pure and clean before God, you attract all the good things of life. So what are the good things that we attract when we are pure before God? Remember, purity is living a sinless life, is living a pure life before God. So we want to, to dig into the scripture and see what do we attract when we are pure before God, when we are virgins before God. So I want to say our, our holiness before God. What do we attract when we are holy? Okay. So we see when the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary, he said, Hail you that are highly favored. So when you are pure before God, you attract favor from the Lord. 
So everything that you do in everything that you will be processing in your life, you will be attracting the favor of God. Number two. Number two, the Bible says, and the angel said, the Lord is with you. So when you are holy and pure before God, you attract the presence of God. The Lord will be with you always. So he will be uh, guiding your steps. His presence will continuously dwell in you. That's what we need as the children of God. The presence of God means everything to us. Number three. The angel said, blessed are you among women. So when you are pure and holy, you attract the blessings from the Lord. So you will be favored, you will attract the presence of the Lord, and you attract the blessings of God. So when you maintain a holy life, God can entrust us with caring greater things. You see, Mary was pure before God. Mary was blameless. She was still a virgin. You know, she hadn't uh, sinned in her life. She was that pure woman. So when she was pure, God entrusted Mary to carry our Savior, Jesus Christ. God didn't just take an ordinary person from anywhere to say, no, I'm going to take this one. You know, not that she was the only holy one who she was, but because she kept herself pure. God entrusted her with carrying our Savior, Jesus Christ. So no ordinary person was chosen, but a blameless person. I want you to catch that. So when we strive to live a holy life, when we strive to live pure before God, we are closer to God. Most of the time, we will be in the presence of God most of the time. And so God, it's easy for God to entrust you with his kingdom blessings. It is easy for God to, to entrust you with things that are deeper. You know, Mary carried the Savior who died for us. You know, the, the person who, who redeemed the world. You know, just because she had carried herself well. So if you carry yourself well, God can deposit something that's special in you. You understand? So when you are pure, God does not even care about your location. Mary was in Nazareth, a city that was despised. No one even thought that Jesus, the mother of Jesus, would come from Nazareth. You know, but Mary was located in the most despised city. So your situation or the level of life that you are in now does not matter to God. So do not say that holiness is for the rich. Holiness is for those that have. Or holiness is for this particular group of people. But when you are holy, God will locate you in that situation that you are in. Or in the level of life that you are in. So God will locate you. He's seeing you. He sees everything. He's the omnipresent God. He sees everything, every time, every second, every minute. He knows what is going on in our lives. So when you are holy before God, he will deposit something, you know, that the world will marvel. I can imagine when Mary, when people, when, when, when Mary had the news that she was, she was going to be carrying the Savior. And when the Savior was born, I can, can imagine the feeling, you know. So don't worry about your location, you know. When you're holy before God, he will deposit something that the world will mother. You will produce greatness and the greatness will prosper you in all your ways. You know, that will be pure blessings, pure blessings from the Lord. Just by simply carrying out a holy and pure life. So God is looking for people to bless in his kingdom. But only the pure in heart and the holy ones will attract these virgin blessings. So guys, this afternoon, I want to say each and every day of our lives, let's strive to live a holy life. Let's strive to live right before God. You know, whenever you see that you are coming out of the way, pull yourself back in and say, God, I need you to cleanse me. Continuous repentance to cleanse yourself, to cleanse your life so that we can attract 
these blessings so that we can attract the presence of God, so that we can gain the favor of the Lord. And when we are in the right standing with God, it is easy for God to locate us. It is easy for God to bless us. You know, God will deposit greatness where it's clean. God will not just go to a, a Christian who goes to, sun, to church every Sunday, who goes to church only on Sundays, who worships him on Sunday, but on Monday to Friday they are living their own lives. God will deposit something great when you are always in his presence, when you are always seeking his face. So God will deposit the greatness on ground that is fertile and ready to receive. So how do you become fertile? You live this holy life. Be a virgin. Be holy. Be pure before God. And you will attract these virgin blessings. So yes, today we were talking about virgin blessings. So how do I get these virgin blessings? I live a holy life. I live a pure life. I run away from sin. I don't attract sin. I don't attract sin when I'm holy. But I live a holy life. So let's be holy so that we can gain the favor of God so that we can gain the presence of God so that we can gain the blessings of God so yes be blessed even this afternoon as we continue to strive and live holy lives before God so God bless you and yes we are ready to receive the virgin blessings God bless you amen heavenly father we thank you for this life transforming teaching we thank you that through this teaching, lives shall be changed, lives shall be touched. We thank you, O oh God, for your Holy Spirit that you've given unto us to enable us to live a holy and a pure life before you. We embrace even the blessings that come with living right in accordance to thy word. We thank you, O oh God, that even in this end time, that your word shall guide us and lead us in all things pertaining to this life. For your word says, you have given us the spirit of the living God to guide us, to teach us, and to lead us in all things pertaining to this life that we live. We bless your name, and we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. We pray in the name of our wonderful Christ Jesus. Amen.